the bass. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yatsky's back. We're back. Welcome. Have a good week. Hello again. Yeah, good week. Easter. Easter weekend. Long weekend. Heavy weekend. Not on a whiskeys today. Oh yeah, drink check. Heavy weekend. All staying hydrated. The juice, and I've got some fruit twist if you want to switch it up. So, yeah, <laughs> have you poured some vodka into that? Who knows? Who knows? Well, no bad end of the call. <laughs> All right, spiked Jatsky, hit us up. Yeah, All right then. All right, this is the first one we're starting with today. Yep, this was my article. So the new 2022 Mercedes-Benz EQS SUV is a luxury electric flagship. So you can flick through the images and get okay. everyone uh, through the top ones. Just hit the oh, open gallery. Yeah, sorry, whatever you want to do. I think uh, okay, it's not working. We'll just uh, ooh, this looks kind of futuristic and nice. It's competing ooh. with the Model X. And the uh, BMW i X is it the yeah, yeah. IX, which I think the BMW the, I love the look of this. It's had mixed reviews. I love it. I think. Ooh, um, ooh! I've always been quite hit and miss with Mercedes. Interior is insane. What do the pedals look like? You always need to do pedal check. Uh, it's just ordinary black. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> quite nice. You got. Prep check, yeah, but for cars, pedal check. <laughs> oh, nice, you got the TV. That's quite <clears throat> nice. Drink stand, whatever that is at the back. It looks nice. It reminds me of a, obviously it's a 4x4, four four, but it reminds me of a Maybach. Because they've got this yeah. stand as well, haven't they? This is like the... Ooh, SUV that's good version. Um, well, I have the uh, Audi e-tron. You prefer that? Yeah. I think it looks more aggressive. It's the Audi e-tron, this, and it. IX and I think the IX. IX loses big time. Well, the IX does it have that massive grill on the front? No, it's it. it, it would, get, can you get the IX up, Jack? If you look at the grill, yep. it doesn't suit the the car. It just looks the front grill. It just doesn't. Um, it just doesn't match the car. It just. I can't obviously, they're it. not real grills, are they? They just. Yeah. Um, like, you shouldn't even have a grill, really. No, they might as well have just not put one. It's the BMW yeah. iX. It's just the iX because that's all. Like you can get the different ones: X3, X5. We'll just go with the standard one. I'll go yeah. with the i the X7 then, if that's available, because that's competing with these big X7. Ones. Oh, you seen a glimpse there? Which one? That, go on that one there. The, the uh, four across on the top row. That's the iX, isn't it? Yeah. I yeah. seven design. Do you not this just seven? Yeah, that just it looks odd. The grill just looks. Yeah, it looks very like tacky, doesn't it? But th this is not. I don't think this is a realistic. I think this is just like a, it's like a simulation. Yeah. Oh, I thought it's um. Well, it's not out yet, but I thought that this is the design that they're going with now. Just what type in it? IX join. Real life. Yeah, this is it. That's it there. Oh, there's already a picture there. <laughs> it, uh, Click on there, the third one across. Ooh. Actually, that's... It, doesn't look, it doesn't look too bad. I think yeah, some, with some EV cars, I think uh, it all matters on what colour you get it in. Yeah. You reckon, yeah. Because I think the one I saw, it looked weird because you, can you see them two things on the side of the front bumper? Yeah, I don't think I had them on, or, or they were painted the same color as the car. So there was more sort of you were attracted to looking at the grill more, but then the grill just looked like the car's on steroids and its balls are drunk. Yeah, because <laughs> no, that's what I find with some EV cars because they have like different color panels for certain parts of the car, and then 
sometimes it looks better if the cars are the same colour as the panels or say the panels are dark most of the time they are if the car's a dark coloured car and you can't really see the panels then it looks good mm. or sometimes when the car's yeah. lighter and you can see the panels then it looks good yeah 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 well Jack and uh, Google the Audi e-tron oh yeah these look nice don't they yeah I like these Yeah, I just think they look like way more aggressive Ooh. from the front. Yeah, the grill matches the, the car. Yeah. In this case. Yeah, but to be fair, it, just, it doesn't look like an EV, does it? It just looks like a your standard car. Which it like should do. It shouldn't have to look like a. EV. Yeah, that's true. There's no need to force like a futuristic look. No. Because that'll just come with time. Yeah, which like if you go back 10 years, this would be a futuristic car. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I suppose we're saying that now about these other cars, and in 10 years, mm. once they iron out the design issues, I think they've got. Um, but yeah, these are sporty looks. Um, I, I, I liked the Mercedes more for the luxury. Yeah. Uh, I'll say the e-tron's still up there as the leading one. But um, look, do you know that um, Mercedes, go on and look at the sedan version of it. The what? The... Uh... Um, EQS sedan. EQS S EQS S sedan. Wait, is the S not for sedan? No clue. Whoa! I watched a video on this the other day, but I forgot. Is this it? Yeah, this is like this is the S class, like equivalent, isn't it? Yeah. Ooh. Or I guess the EQ. I don't know what the the Q stands for. I don't know why, but it, it just reminds me of the, um, like the Beamer equivalent in GTA Four, the five door one. I don't know. I, that just I don't know why it just reminds me of that. I don't know if I like this. I know that's the, that the other car I showed it was a this uh, SUV version of this, and I think it, it looks so much better than this. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the arch back doesn't really suit it. I feel like the luxury has been really, more elevated. What? Go back. Playbook. Sorry, Jack. Go back on, go on back that. On those pictures. Is that the same car underneath? Um, yeah, that one. Second one down. First one. Yeah. See, with, with this, like it, it looks better with you know the di contrasting colors, different colors. Yeah. Yeah. And with it all one color, but this looks like it's just um like a render. Yeah, I don't know. Well, this is how it would look on the road, potentially. I think we've got a black at the top and some sort of metallic. Me. No, I don't know, actually. Go on, mm. um, the fourth one down, first one. The curves the are nice. There's no, there's no throw line. getting. The fourth one down, here, this one. Yeah, that one. Ooh. See, that looks all right like that. What's they all look different in a way. Like, they don't look like the same car. That one's lower. <laughs> it's got different that specs, must be maybe. a render as well, I think. Yeah, this is different. Electric yeah. Halo car. The production, the production spec EQS. This is a new era of cars, and I'm yeah, <laughs> they look like um, yeah, it's just they're trying to a lot of EV cars. I feel like they're going, trying to go a bit too too out there. Yeah, the, the, because Mercedes, um, BMW, and Audi are trying to compete so aggressively with each other. Mm. They're trying to one eat up each other, and I think they're just getting a bit out of hand. Audi have done the right thing and just kept it exactly in line with their cars at the moment. Have you seen the photo of the um, evolution of the BMW grill? Yeah, where it's gone like <laughs> it's just getting bigger. It's just getting like longer. Yeah, I don't know why they they've, they've made them so big. <laughs> I think at the moment. No, personally, I think Audi's are like winning best looking car. <laughs> it's like a V on it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it becomes a radiator. I love that. <laughs> that just looks like it has a mustache now. Imagine a Beamer with a mustache. That one's peak. <laughs> Click on that one there, Jack, and the two red cars with the circle on. The two red ones. Yeah, this yeah, one. I see him. That's how small he started. Oh, uh, really? If you look at the uh, the Beamer from 
Did he have it oh, on right. there? Yeah, Jack in the third one along. Not the third one. Oh, well, you can see it now. Two, three, this one. Yeah, that one. Ooh. Oh, they're going. Yeah, it looks like they're heading back. But, yeah. but that car seems that. The modern cars. Oh, yeah. It does look quite nice. In 21, I like. Uh, yeah, I guess I like it. Yeah, that, that oh, was quite nice, that car, actually. It's, that's with everything else and the other grills on the bumper, left and right of the bumper. And... Yeah. Hmm. What's your favourite sure BMW grill? What's your favourite BMW grill, like from all the generations? Probably the E46, maybe. Go back on the uh, picture of all the generations. There was that cool one with the black background, uh, which shows the lights as yeah, well. Yeah, that one. This one? Uh, no, no, left. Because the, the lights are always iconic as well, aren't they? Well, Ooh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's more the lights than it is the grill. I guess the grills just get slightly bigger each time with the lights. Because that, yeah, uh, 2018. I feel, like, feel like this is my favourite. Them lights are amazing. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I like the lights now as well, though. Oh, yeah. But if, they're all nice. They're like a, yeah. <laughs> they are, they're, they're all good in their own ways, but then it just goes to show how... The engineering has changed because I guess this is a lot more te technologically advanced than what the E53 would have been. Mm. So I reckon it's for design, but there's probably some more science behind that too compared to the the older generations. You're head of science, Jack. What's the science <laughs> behind this? Do you think? I don't actually know, but off the top of my head, I guess it's longer, so maybe it has more of a more, it's maybe it's more powerful in a way. I guess. How much brake horsepower does it have? <laughs> maybe a hundred maybe like 10 the, uh, f15 lights as well yeah but yeah they're quite yeah simple simple does work though sometimes would do audi or merc have one of these um pollution charts they really have them they're not really signature Girls. they don't have a I don't think they have a signature grill do they no mm, well Going one above that. It's the same picture. I guess they have. It's just not as exciting because the. Uh... No. <laughs> yeah. I think the BMW one's more like, iconic, that's why. What about well, Mercedes? Maybe. Do they have the yeah, evolution? I feel like Mercedes don't have like a um, signature Galiba, right? Oh, they did have them iconic ones there. Oh, the the light. Well, we'll check the check the grills first, and then we'll check the lights. They did a. Oh, well, I guess so. They've done it in twos. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The first ones look similar. Then the second one. Then the third one. So, and now they're going into another area for the fourth type with the electric cars. Yeah, with this one, and then they've got another one, and then. <laughs> Oh no, that's that's a BMW. BMW. That's a three series lights. That's, that's a three cool. series one. That's, that's better, better to look at. <laughs> okay, that's a bit blurry, isn't it? Then you obviously want to look at from here. I think. <laughs> oh, that's comparing BMW and Mercedes. <laughs> the grills from way back. So the, the older ones were quite quite tall. Then decided to get more more shorter. And wider. All right. Have BMW got an evolution of tail lights? See. Um. Oh, that's headlights. Yeah. Tail lights. Oh, tapped in tail lights. That's which the last minute. Ooh. It's the five five series. These are quite. Yeah, they don't really have the same as the front. No. Yeah, but I feel like with these designs, I think the more simple designs do suit the EVs. I feel like if you go too complex, they will get to that in the future, obviously. But for now, there's not much. There's not much research done behind EVs, and I feel like with the designs, they're going too hard. 
but I feel simple always it's always better yeah more simplistic mm. for sure yeah no I agree so right. what are you guys though BMW not currently not well for the future currently BMW Mercedes or Audi out of the three the three Germans what would I rather own what would you rather own or what do you prefer to look at what you were more of a fan favorite of hmm. I've always liked BMWs but recently I've been I've been liking my Audis so you've changed but, from BMW to Audi yeah but if I was to own one I think I would own I'd rather a BMW <laughs> why is that to drive driving experience the ultimate mm. driving machine. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have to agree with Aaron. I think it all comes down to the driving experience. So I said BMW. I would say you, BMW too. You're sat behind the wheel, you're not looking at the car. Exactly. But and they I, still look nice. They still look nice. They don't look shit, but I just think Audis look a bit more. Yeah. They are looking nicer and nicer, BMWs, but they're not jumping in terms of. Mm. Like looking really nice whereas all these are jumping up a lot nicer but i'll go with bmw more on the fact of the heritage of the car like I, if you look back at the line of bmws have always yeah. looked quality well you know I, I think i think it's only this recent generation that i've not really got on board with the previous generations i've liked the look of yeah you're excited when they launched yeah but now i just feel like they're getting a bit i think it's the grills it's killing me yeah well, they're running out of ideas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. well, all right. Yatsuki, you ready for the next one? Next article, yeah. All right. This one might be a bit. This is another one from me. Um, <laughs> something a bit controversial. Or shall I say not controversial, actually. So transphobic content has been removed from the GTA 5 remasters um hmm. a game which was built around controversy has now removed the controversy Instead i think of, huh? well, you keep talking i was saying i was just in my head when i was reading i was reading through the article and i think i kind of stopped reading through it because i just thought a game like, well rockstar who have released grand theft auto as a series stopped releasing grand theft autos but we keep re-releasing it, but now with less content. So then actually not bringing out more stuff, they're bringing out less stuff <laughs> in the- Yeah. And I think this is an issue because <laughs> Grand Theft Auto has always been like a game that you just expect them to be mocking modern culture with. Yeah. And for them to take something like that out, I just think, is it really Grand Theft Auto anymore? Because you play Grand Theft Auto and it's it's not seriously taking the mick out of transgender people or any part of American or Western culture. It's just, it's mocking them in a lighthearted way. And you play the game expecting that. And that's what gives the game its charm. Yeah. And if they're going to start censoring the game in that fashion, like, I just feel like, what's the future of the game going to be when GTA 6 comes out, is it? Is it just going to be? Well, is it going to have the same charm as the previous games had? Yeah. What is GTA Six even going to be? Wow. <laughs> mm. What's going to be left with? And then it's just going to be a game with not. That was the fun side of it. The the way they took the the piss out of society and culture. That was the yeah. obviously you get the killing side and but every game does that. You kill people on every game. You have guns. You race around. Everyone does that. But the beauty of the stories. That gets you so immersed is that they are real they're talking about real life experiences and it's humorous the the picking out the funny side of it that's all going bit by bit yeah yeah i feel um, like with gta 5 it had a good balance of the story which was very good so they didn't bring online out when gta 5 released they brought the story and then they would have phased in the multiplayer so you could have played the campaign taking your time with that not having to worry about you know becoming ready for the online finish a story which was by the way great story at the time great graphics great cinematography all, all, all of it just came together to be that game 
I'm not too sure if we got Game of the Year that year, but I think it was the same year as Last of Us or another game like that. I think that might have won it. We'll look at that in a second. But anyway, um, but then Online came out and that was a perfect balance because they nailed the campaign and the multiplayer. But over the years with GTA Online, if, if you have played it, just to give a bit of context, it's driven by a lot of microtransactions, a lot of um, <laughs> kids borrowing their parents' credit cards to buy, you know, shark cards, to buy the latest cards and stuff. So it's just gone downhill from there. I feel like since Red Dead 2, an another great game by Rockstar, I feel like the studio's gone downhill in a way. Mm. Well, that think... guy's last masterpiece, weren't it? Red Dead Redemption 2. I forgot his name. Arthur Morgan. I completed that in... Oh, no, the guy that worked oh, at Rockstar. The guy well, well, one of the brothers, wasn't he? That left. Was it Dan? Dan Bow Bowser. How Hauser. Hauser. Dan Hauser. He left. I don't know whether it's Dan that left or I, don't, I can't remember the other guy's name. There were three of them that started it. One of them left a bit back, and then the one but, the writer left after Red Dead Two. I think going back to this article and what Giant said is this article is showing where Rockstar's focus is now because they want to appeal to a mass audience and if they have controversial pieces in like this that gave its charm to the game originally people won't buy the game anymore and there'll be outrage and the game will get cancelled on social media and mm -hmm. people will boycott it so rockstar's main focus now is obviously appeal to the masses appeal to the mass and get the money in so that kind of shows then how society back in the day because obviously they were so appealing at the time because of the controversy yeah but they had massive out them um, lawsuits and everything because of how controversial controversial <laughs> it was especially with i think grand theft auto 3 and the time uh that came out so that's just showing how society's progressed from being okay in acceptance and wanting controversy to being against it yeah yeah massive there's a massive shift since even since like when gta 5 came out which yeah. was eight years ago. 2013, was it? Bloody hell, almost 10 years ago. A long time. You're a lot older. Cancel culture since then become a lot more prominent. I guess social media has been a driver of that too, sadly. Mm. But with Rockstar and GTA 6, obviously as a gamer, I've been outraged as anyone that it's not been released. But I think there was a tipping point for me where I was excited for it annoyed about it because they're not releasing it then the shark cards stuff got a bit overwhelming mm. so then you start getting a little bit more annoyed with rockstar and then they just keep milking it and milking it and milking it getting you more and more annoyed and then i think when they did the first lot of remasters for the old games the mm. old trilogy they removed some content from them um i forget i forget which game they removed content from i think it was vice city and then that sort of and then I bought the trilogy and had, so they already took content out of it, sold it for a very extortionate amount of money and the game was broken, but they just pushed it out there to get sales. Mm. That was my tipping point, a long built up tipping point. And now I'm not even bothered. I'm not even, I'm not even excited for GTA six. This type of stuff just makes me not excited for the game anymore. No, no, I agree with you. I think yeah. the tipping point that you're talking about is where, when GTA online started, it was more grindy and less microtransactions to get money. But now the economy is so broken and like to get the top card, you need to spend a lot of money where now like, you kind of had to have to get more microtransactions than grinding. So you can't really grind for that money anymore. You need to get the shark cards to be able to fund that lifestyle that you want on GTA Online. Yeah, that's true. And we didn't grind when we first played. No, we didn't. <laughs> I mean, geez, it was broken the first few. Do you remember when you first played GTA Online and you were just stuck in the clouds? Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. First phase? And you could uh, change your DNS server and you shoot someone and you just pick up loads of money off them. The money yeah. glitch. You shoot someone yeah. and you get, what, like millions of GTA currency. So that's <laughs> what we did. And we, we bought the best of Skyrise apartment. We had everything at the beginning. But then I swear, even if we had that much, the same amount of money now, we still we wouldn't be able to afford much with the way it is. No, I've not played for about five six years GTA Online, oh. but I've what heard about it last? and it's got a bit uh, like people have like war um, airplanes and stuff, don't they? Yeah, 
like what they call them? I don't know what they call, but uh, they so as soon as you log on, like it's pay to win. So if you don't put the money in, you can't fight with these guys because they have yeah. So you can't compete on a yeah fair fair level. Not at all. Mm. There's all the uh, aircraft vehicles, all the armored vehicles and stuff, and you need a lot of money. Well, you don't need that much to get the actual base vehicle, but it's like the base that you need to compete with people. It's all the upgrades or the turrets or the guns. Mm. And then in warfare, you just get shot from, from the sky and you can't do anything on the ground. And that's just how much it's changed. But that, uh, one of the ex well, one of the ex guys from Rockstar, he's released a new game, right? Called everywhere is it oh, yeah. it was, it was dan hauser that left dan hauser was the one that left he's not the one doing um everywhere though is he he's doing something else i think did you say everywhere is a game where you can just play as anything you want so you could be like a bush driver or i think it's going to be like the gta rp the role playing on gta yeah and that's what modders love they love yeah. playing playing that stuff that's what he's seen i mean the guy who's decided to go with that game yeah, he's seen there's a market there, and he's uh, yeah, he's gone away and made it. When okay, so it? yeah, build a rocket boy. That's the uh, developing company. So what I believe will be the new role play. The role play's been um, increasing a lot. I feel like because of the divide from GTA Online and the tipping point that you mentioned, um, the GTRP server. So people found another way to kind of turn multiplayer into an over experience where it's not driven just by microtransactions and the role play is becoming a lot more prominent, so I feel this game will be good and similar to role play, I hope. I mean, a good way these guys can make money is if they don't do micro transactions because it's just getting a bit they've just Everyone's doing it now. So. Yeah, but they've not ruined it, they've not made it like, nice or FIFA especially. <laughs> uh, yeah. But if they just do like a subscription, so you subscribe to the game. I know World of Warcraft do it for ten pounds and a lot of people pay for that. But if everywhere I want to go for a bigger audience and just drop the price a bit, I wouldn't mind if it's a game I'm going to play quite often in a month, paying a couple of pounds a month for it to be a well-developed and maintained game. Yeah, rather than just having to buy microtransactions all the time. Yeah, because mm. that, that, I'd rather just subscribe and play the game. Or yeah, maybe developers will go down that route because as it goes into cloud gaming as well, you could subscribe and then because you're a subscription they'll get paid monthly from your subscription yeah you can, probably, you can see it going down that route gta um maybe not gta i think gta is too far down the line unless people start sort of boycotting rockstar because of all the microtransactions mm. then it might change the business model but at the moment i think it's still quite a popular game isn't it yeah i think it is still up there in like the top three most play games at any given moment mm. I don't know what so there's not there's not real like rush for them to bring out GTA 6 or change their business model no nah. they've hit the jackpot yeah and they're just marketing now uh, it's, uh, the games <clears throat> it over but they market the game towards everyone under <laughs> yeah it's mostly kids now isn't it and yeah. that's the other thing is that they'll, they're more likely to get more microtransactions because they have a lot more time and I guess tailoring the marketing towards them means that they're going to get more money in a way. But then you're also the other thing is with competition with developers now, there's been developers coming in, like smaller developers, just waiting to jump on the hype train and they've made better games. And maybe there's a Rockstar competitor just waiting to take that market share, make a banging game mm. and become the new Rockstar. Yeah, I've heard this as well. Like indie games are on the on the rise. And mm. I think it was, yeah, I think it, when I, we were talking about it, it was Dan Hauser who left recently. And because it was Leslie um, who left first and started oh, Build a Rocket Boy and then started everywhere. But it was Dan who left. And instead of setting something else up, he invests in like indie game developers or indie game studios. Mm, that's the thing, yeah. Because he obviously spotted there on the rise and... So he now invests with it into them companies. So he's got a good vision. And he was the writer of these big games. So imagine him going to invest in and having a big share in some of these indie games. They'll be massive. Mm, and it needs yeah. that. I think the gaming industry needs that because games have gone so they're boring now, a lot of them. 
Yeah. And then just to touch on your Dan Hauser point, do you think he's invested into smaller indie games companies like you mentioned? Because maybe he's faced an experience in the past where no matter how good your plans or or whatever plans you have for a game, if you don't have the funding or the investment, you just can't make that game. So do you think he's had like sort of an experience in the past where he's learned from that and now he's like smaller companies do need investing in him? I don't know. I don't know what his thought process would be behind there. I know he's obviously got a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he's obviously putting it to good use and he's supporting these guys and these are the creative people, aren't they, that are building these games. Look at Valheim. That was what was that built by like two or three people or five people? A small developer studio, but one that never really heard of, and that took off quite quickly. So yeah, he's obviously just showing support out to these because they have more creative minds. I think Rockstar's losing their creativity completely. Mm-hmm. Mm. I think like when you have smaller developers, they're more passionate about what they're working on. Yeah. Whereas yeah. when you've got bigger developers, they just want to churn out games. Like COD comes out every year. It's the same old crap. FIFA comes year. out every FIFA year. comes out every year, same old crap. But no, these indie creative. developers, they've actually come up with an idea that they're passionate about and you want to make sure it's the best, yeah. the best that they can do. And it'll be new, exciting. Yeah, Alheim. That was such a an experience of a game that I've never had with a, a, a game for a long time since. Closest well, equivalent for me was probably Minecraft, um, but then they put a Viking twist on it. So that's what you mentioned, like putting, even putting small twists on an idea that's already out there. That that can go a long way with Valheim. <laughs> I imagine they took the idea from Minecraft and put a bit of a Viking touch on it, and that blew up. So maybe GCA with some sort of twist might be the next big thing that comes up but who knows we'll have to see mm. should we uh go for the next one next one yeah did two of mine in a row then you put me under a lot of pressure yeah well taking the pressure off you now, now that's <laughs> the spotlight or oh, more gaming more is gaming this? this is my topic nice Okay, so this topic is, um, this happened last week, I'm not too sure if you guys have heard of it, but it's Sony and Kirkby, which is a brother or sister company of Lego. They've actually invested um, two billion in Epic Games to sort of carry on the metaverse concept. And just to give a bit of background into the metaverse, so I don't, I still don't know what the metaverse is. It's been around for a long time and the idea of it, but I imagine it's going to be a sort of a virtual 3D sort of gaming world for people where they can buy intellectual property in some way through NFTs or some other sort of things to fund it. And there's a lot of investment into gaming companies and with Epic Games with Fortnite, they've kind of made this, they've started on this metaverse concept and there's a lot of microtransactions in Fortnite too. They've done like Travis Scott. Have you heard of the Travis Scott concepts and stuff that they've done in Fortnite? So there's a lot of money going into it and sort of what interested me about this article is that the game studio is finally getting more investment into it. But I was curious to see what you guys thought of the metaverse and how it's being funded at the moment. There's many, many different aspects of the metaverse. I don't think it's one. It's not at the moment anyway. It's not one concept. It's going to be a multitude of concepts brought together so if you read Mm. um i was just reading as you brought this up the second paragraph there it reads um that sorry the one just above that the first paragraph under the the something um that they announced that they entered into a long-term partnership intent to build immersive creates creatively inspiring and engaging digital experience for kids of all ages to enjoy together so the metaverse and how we are going to experience it and how we're probably experiencing it now is going to be a digital experience. Mm-hmm. So I know it's obviously put on the VR headset or the AR headset and you're fully immersed, but even with gaming, online gaming, which has been around for a while, you're sort of immersed in an online experience there. So if you want to look at it that way, the metaverse has already begun and we've been in it for a while. This is just collectively putting a name to it and adding all sorts in. So you're going to get augmented reality for shopping. For example, if you want to stick on your AR headset and go and try on some clothes, and then if you like them on your person in your augmented room on your headset, then you can purchase the clothes and they'll come to your house. So there's many different like avenues to it. Um, I think gaming is going to be the most popular one to begin with. And 
to well to bring it properly forward uh, because gaming's a massive seller. There's also other sellers which, um, well, maybe the corporate side of it where people mm. use it for meetings and like doing business deals with people, like because you can you can do it over Zoom, but you can do it like you're actually physically somewhere with somebody. Yeah. But personally, I don't think it's going to feel that much more immersive than what we're already experiencing now. Other than the fact you can have a look, like a bit of a look around, but you're going to be in a fit, a made up world anyway. It's not going to look like the real world. From what I've seen already of the metaverse, it's all like like you're in a Fortnite game or something. Like, but yeah. I feel like once the technology gets good enough, like cloud computing can host these immersive environments where it does actually look like you're in a real life world. That's when it will start taking off a bit more maybe, or even when Elon's uh, Neuralink comes out and is like massively produced and you can literally enter the metaverse in your head. Yeah. So everything you feel is just setting off neurons in your brain and you actually think you're feeling it, then that's going to be, that would be the game changer, I think, with the metaverse. So at the moment, I can't, I don't think, I don't know, I can't really picture business guys sat around, a, sat at home with a VR headset on, like having a business meeting with somebody. I just think it's a bit too, too like far-fetched idea. You say that, but then that's like the last gener, the, the old generation of business people. I mean, the new mm. ones, so let's not even say our generation, even the generation that come after us, they're all glued to their phones anyway, 24 seven. So they're adapted to technology so much that when they do come out of education and go and get a job, yeah. then they might find, they'll probably go through education, learning about VR. With the VR headset on. Yeah. And then it'll become a norm for them. Yeah. Catch up. So there'll just be that transition, I think. And then it will get quite, Normal, but I think gaming is definitely going to take it quite far. Um, but yeah, I didn't know about that investment. It sounds quite exciting because Epic Games obviously massive. So yeah, so there is a, a lot of entities. What did you say, Jordan? I just, I would just. It's a short one. Um, they've just got a lot of technical expertise. They've they've made Fortnite, which is a big selling game. So I guess just all that expertise together would be good. Yeah, I think there is a lot of money being pumped into the metaverse so it's not mm -hmm. i don't think it's all just going to go to waste like the metaverse isn't going away yeah but it's, i just think it's gonna because i think bill gates said by 2024 or something or 2025 like that's when the metaverse will be used for like on a mass audience for business meetings but i can't i don't know i can't see it. i think it's a bit too too soon mm, it does sound a bit soon no to be honest We've yeah, literally just, yeah. Just moved to Skype, like before people are still traveling the world and uh, actually meeting people face to face. But because of COVID, we've had to we've moved to Skype and I mean Zoom. We use now Skype. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But technology evolves, doesn't it? So yeah, but it's just how quickly do, do people actually take it on board? Yeah. There needs to be a big, big summit, big to sort of, I mean, yeah. the summit big that happened with the pandemic that got everyone behind screens for their, every meeting. Summit big needs to help us push us onto the uh, metaverse, I guess. Yeah, big shock. But then also, I w wanted to touch on what Aaron was talking about, Neuralink. And I don't know why, but I just um, feel like something like the Matrix could happen with, with the chip in your head. Um, but I don't know what, yeah. guy, what your guys take on it is. Yeah, I think definitely that could easily happen. Maybe uh, not to the extent of the Matrix where machines are running the actual real world. But, Neo uh, glitching everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But I think people who want to escape real life, or I feel like you'd, you'd, to, you'll have to be 
in the metaverse to live your life and you only come out of it for maybe good for a physical exercise and to eat mm. yeah i mean you say that you don't think it's going to be to the extent of the matrix but the matrix had to start somewhere and true i mean obviously as the future goes and technology grows and if more viruses like covid come out which keeps pushing us back into our homes to commute over communicate over screens then things like that as we progress through the future is going to push us more and more into the metaverse and then as that progresses it could end up looking like a matrix situation if you look at outside outside real life yeah like a hundred years down the line or something Mm. yeah you don't know where it's going to go how where does technology even go from there you don't even know intergalactic travel (laughs) (laughs) why are you laughing i think i think laughing yeah no it's true yeah but i think we need neuralink to make that happen yeah well it could happen it either will happen or or die trying (laughs) basically yeah (laughs) and i think that's the only thing that can sort of save humanity i'm not save humanity but increase the the next level humanity I don't think we'll survive on Earth um, with how sort of I know climate change is quite bad and all governments implementing sort of fixes to make it more EV related and stuff. But in my opinion, I don't think we're going to survive on this Earth. Like there's a lot of movies about it too, sort of dystopian ones that about life in space or on, on another planet. But in my honest opinion, I don't think we're going to survive on this Earth. Maybe a lot. It'll be a long time from now. So. <laughs> We're going to survive on this earth for now, but I feel like a long time away, we won't survive on this earth. Something's going to happen that's going to end earth, which is quite scary. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like, if we start moving humans around space, then it increases longevity of humanity. Yeah. Whether it's because if something happens on earth or if Elon goes to Mars and something happens on Mars and that civilization dies on Mars, then at least it's a civilization on earth. Mm-hmm. And that's what that's when humanity, I think, will go to the next level. Yeah, so my, my idea about what you mentioned about Earth Not Dying, it's actually behind this movie, Elysium. Um, have you guys watched it with Matt Damon in? No, I've not seen it, but I've heard about it. Uh, someone put a poll on LinkedIn saying, what do you see the future of the world most looking like? And this was one of the films, and there was a couple others. Um, but have you have you seen this one, Jack? Yeah, this, this one's quite good, so... Um, with Matt Damon, I think he works in like a radiation facility or something and he gets locked into where something happens with radiation and he gets infected by the radiation. So he gets radiation sickness and I don't think he's got that long to um, to live. So he goes to some exoskeleton specialist and they put that into his body and I think he gets healed. And I think all of the the richest people live um, somewhere out of Earth and I don't think Earth's a civilized place in the movie. So the movie is basically about him going to that place and trying to make a change and trying to take all the poorer people to that place. Because I think they have some sort I'm trying, I'm following the movie now, but I might as well keep on going Spoiler. on. So, I think I spoiled one in the last episode. So, okay. Well, um, if you don't want to hear spoilers about this movie and you're going to watch it, then do skip. But basically they've got some sort of healing machine on that planet where it can heal any disease, anything, cancer, the worst disease you can think of, it can heal it. So his ideology was to take all the people to the new island of the new earth or whatever it was called. Elysium, yeah. I think it's called. New planet. Is it a planet? Some sort of planet, yeah. Um, with those machines so it can heal everyone. That's what it's a dystopian movie. It's really good. When did it come out, that film? 2013 it came out. Oh right. So well, nearly ten years ago. Yeah, yeah I think the poll I saw it was what's most likely Elysium. Um I think it was Ready Player One. Oh, yeah. What a movie. I think The Matrix might have been on there, but if not, let's just chuck it in anyway. And. You think like Divergent like or like some sort of. No. I forgot what the, the other one was, but let's just say from them three, what would you say is most likely? Um, I think it's hard for you guys because you've not watched Elysium. So. I feel like I just watched it with your. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good to hear. Um... I'll go first. I honestly think that Elysium will have maybe not 100%, but some sort of 
integration into what future will look like. That's what I think. So Elysium for me. I, I think it'd be sort of a mix of them yeah. all. Like, yeah. because I feel like to do intellectual, intergalactic uh, space travel, if you're going to be on a spaceship for that long, your brains are going to have to be entertained somehow or stimulated in a way. Stimul stimulated, yeah. So that's going to happen through some sort of virtual reality. It'll be um, a step by step. Yeah. Process. What's that? It'll be a process. What do you mean? So if we're saying if you're saying like they'll all happen, and for example, Ready Player One happens, but then after that there'll be the next movie that will happen. Ah, okay. So, so they don't happen at once to have to happen in sort of stages. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what days. you're saying. But then again, yeah, you get to the point saying. you can't go to another planet if you're in a bucket like you are <laughs> in Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I think it. with the Matrix, like, it's outside of the actual Matrix. Can you see machines, like, taking over the world and using humans as the slaves? No, because I think there's enough movies to warn us against letting that happen. <laughs> I wrote about the first one I think of. <laughs> but I feel like the concept of the actual Matrix, like, where did the people actually go? I think that could take off and be popular. But I just don't think machines will take over the world and just feed off human human energy. It's all about whether they, um, whether robots develop their own consciousness, but I just feel like with machine learning and all that research that's going on, that's all driven by a human mind and to re replicate a human mind in a robot, it's very rare. Like, I just don't feel like a robot can replicate a human mind. Um, even if they're learning with machine learning and stuff, because with a robot, it's all about processes, but with a human mind, we've got that sort of conscious side of us. So emotion, emotion, but that's the, that's the scary thing because we've got that emotion. We wouldn't treat humanity that way, but robots, they won't have the mm. emotion. So they would, they would just think, Destroy. oh, we can, we can use these guys as a life like a source of life for us, source yeah. of energy. So why don't we do this with them and keep them alive and just feed off their energy? Have you listened to JRE Duncan Trussell? Cab? Nope. Uh, I'm traveling to tomorrow, so I'm going to listen to it whilst I'm traveling. All right. He's good. He talks about some of this stuff. Oh, he asked, uh, have you seen the Tesla bot? Have you guys seen it? You've not seen the Tesla bot? The Tesla bot. One of my articles. Tesla bot. Tesla bot. It was in your article. No, I should have chosen it for one of my articles. Oh, Whoa. I just remember the buying now. <laughs> Pull that shit up. <laughs> I look at a picture. I just think of someone in a gimp suit. <laughs> <laughs> it is someone. It is someone in a gimp suit. That's like CJ when he's got that gimp suit on in San Andreas. <laughs> <laughs> look at him. It is gen. This is genuinely someone in a gimp suit. That is. All um, right. All right. At the um, Tesla. Expo thing. Well, that's not, but the live pictures are. What, to show a concept? Yeah, it's to show a concept. So he oh, yeah. is designing this uh, robot that will do, like, just jobs around the house and that kind of crap. <laughs> Isn't, I don't understand, because Elon's always the one saying that AI, AI is going to kill us. Would you get one? Um, Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Just a just a gimp, <laughs> washing your clothes and <laughs> yeah, just wash his clothes, send it shopping, <laughs> take your bins out. That's what as he as Elon must not watch that robot. <laughs> <laughs> Put the video on, Jotting. It does a dance. <laughs> oh gosh! Uh, did, did, have you watched the uh, um? I don't even know what you would call it. It's not an unreveal, is it? Uh, I think it's like an expo, Tesla expo or something. Like reveals. You might, yeah, fast, yeah, put it to about there. Oh my god, that's loud. Like we can't hear anything. Oh, I don't think you're sharing with sound. Um, you... What the? It's fine, just play it. It doesn't matter. We don't really need sound. Okay. Oh god, no, I'm not sharing.
All right, I've got sound now anyway. Apologies about that. Oh, nice. Did you hear that? No. Show me your own screen. You're looking at your upgrades for your ass. <laughs> okay. Happens, happens. Is, is that good now? Yeah, good, good. Yeah, play it. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Look at Elon is watching. Oh yeah. Yeah, you can pause it now, Jan. Okay. You can watch the rest of it later if you want. Yeah. I'm surprised you guys haven't seen that. So we just does household chores? Yeah, that's what I think he's designed it for. Well, it well like, I think you can do other stuff as well, just any like sort of labour work. When are they due to be? Um, not 100% sure on that. In stores? It's a bit of a... Well, yeah, like, if you want like your drive reef surfacing, you'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> For free, but... you, Joe Rogan goes, he'll get one and teach it jiu jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Duncan, Duncan Trussell starts freaking out when he says that. <laughs> you can imagine just imagine it being like a bully just going up to like random kids and beating them down. <laughs> Once they develop a consciousness, <laughs> it'll be, I don't know, it'd be quite, like, depending on how, well, depending on how evolved it will be, it could teach Joe Rogan how to be better at jiu jitsu. Yeah. Oh, I That's see. scary though, once it gets it's connected yeah. to the internet and it's got the internet at its disposal. That's like an evolved version of it where like if you mm. want to pick up a new hobby like play the violin, you buy a violin and you sit down with the robot and then that night it'll just teach you how to play violin. I think what else you could ask it to learn though, like from not like what we could do, but maybe some bad actors could ask it to learn, you know, how to make a bomb or something. Oh yeah. Or we'll just get turned into a sex toy, this thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> getting, getting excited now. There's all, there's all these niches that they can, different niches can abuse. I can, I see how it's going to uh, how it'll lift off because, well, like you said, how to make the B word. But if you're going to do anything, then you just Google it. Like, how to fix this on my car? Instead of that, you just tell geezer over there, go yeah. change my battery in my car. But like he mirrored a video, so it like goes into him, so he watches a video in his head, and then he learns how to do you it. You just put the video on USB and then plug it into him. <laughs> but then I guess, John, you go go to the shops. There'll be no workers there. It'll just be these mm. guys like stacking shelves and walking around the store. I guess we'll all be in our alternate reality. That thing will be cleaning up like everything, bringing you food, showering you whilst you're in. So you won't even need to leave. The alternate <laughs> reality because this guy's doing everything for you you can stay in the metaverse while the robots do the work in the real world <laughs> yeah now that is the matrix then yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what we're talking about <laughs> but it's our choice not the robot's choice yeah <laughs> that's mad that so what's the terminator how, well, how does that happen? How, where did that like evolve from to become the Terminator? I don't know. I've not, I've not seen it. I've not watched it for a while. Oh, okay. I'll just skip that one. I thought one of you might have watched it. No. Have you? Nope. <laughs> I know the concept of it, but I thought All right. <laughs> one of you guys might explain it. Like, no, I've not seen it. Well, I've seen it. It's on my list. I've got loads of stuff on my list. Yeah, I did as well. I watched some, well, I watched quite a lot of, uh, because I've watched a few here and there, but I watched loads of Robert De Niro films the other day. All right. Which ones did you watch? Taxi Driver. Oh, yeah. Did you watch that? No, it's on my list. Um, Heat. Oh, yeah, that's on my list too. Put that at the top of your list. <laughs> Heat. Have you watched, is it Cape Fear? No, no, that's on my De Niro list. That's on my list too. My De Niro list is my priority list at the moment. That's a good idea to actually pick a priority list. Yeah. Um, he's got Al Pacino in it as well. How does it? He plays a he plays a cop. Is he good in it? 
Al Pacino or De Niro? Both. It's hard because I love Al Pacino, but he plays the cop and De Niro. No spoilers, really, in this. De Niro plays <laughs> the like, villain. The criminal. But in them sort of films, you root for the villain. Yeah. Not against the cop. And it kind of knocked me off a bit because I'm like, I, I love Al Pacino. But I'm yeah. not rooting for him in this film. Because he always plays the, the bad guy. Yeah. The bad. <laughs> Good pun. <laughs> but then, yeah. But well, I've been liking De Niro. I do like He's a good actor. And I watched, obviously, Meet the Fuckers and Meet the Parents as well. To, oh, yeah, yeah. I've seen them. To have a bit, put a bit of a spin on it so I'm not watching all these serious gangster films. But, yeah, put um, Heat on your list and put Taxi Driver is good. It's just one of them you just need to watch. Yeah, that's been on my list for ages. I think Godfather Part Two is probably the only. Is it? Is it Part Two with De Niro in, where it shows the upbringing of him? Yeah, when he becomes the Don. Yeah, the Don. But yeah, that's it for me. All right, next article. Let's go. Make sure I actually share the right screen now. Okay, I've learned already. All right, so we're back to the uh, Elon updates. There's always the Elon. Aaron's so, do you remember we had a bit of speculation last week that he didn't want to go on the board because he wants to to buy mm-hmm. Twitter. Yeah, he put um, spoke to the SEC and he put uh, I think it was a forty eight billion pound offering to buy to turn Twitter private. Um, Not to privatize it. Yeah, uh, the shareholders I think they voted against it, but it looks like. He's going to keep pushing. He spoke to who, sorry? The SPEC. SEC. So the Securities Exchange. Does it sound for a giant? Security Exchange. Securities Exchange Commission. Commission, Commission yeah. yeah. Commission. It's like a regulator, isn't it? For yeah, they stuff. regulate like, yeah, like public stocks in America. Right. <clears throat> um, okay. Did you know the Saudi... I think it's Saudi Kingdom Trust or something, have, I'm not sure what the holding is in Twitter, but they've got a high high stake in Twitter. And um, he was, I think it's the king, or I don't know, one of the sheikhs something in Saudi was very much against um, Elon, by Elon taking over Twitter. I think I found the article. Here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. He's got five point two percent, I think. It was can you are you able to get the list up of everyone that's got a stake, but in terms of biggest stakes in Twitter? Um, yeah. All right, there's something I want to say about this thing now. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, put the other one up. Put, put the other one back up, and then search for this on the side, John. Okay. Um. He tweeted, he, oh, sorry, scroll down on here, John, sorry. Yeah, I don't believe that. So, yeah, he didn't okay. think um, the offer was big enough to purchase it, and Elon tweeted back, scroll down a bit, John. Yep. <laughs> sorry. Oh, and he saw an Arabic. No, it's fine. Yeah, twi- uh, Elon's tweet back to him was... Oh, Elon's sweet. This one. Yeah, here. Interesting. <laughs> two questions. Just two questions, if I may. How much Twitter does the kingdom own directly and indirectly? And what are the kingdom's views on journalistic freedom of speech? Whoa. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so he's uh he's firing shots at him. Yo, um, he's gonna get assassinated. <laughs> he's gonna cancel him. <laughs> I don't know. Do you guys remember what happened in Turkey? Nope. All right, so there's a journalist, a Saudi Arabian journalist, that um, it was about four years ago. He was writing some negative stuff about Saudi Arabia. Oh, yeah, took, sorry, I've heard about this book. Yeah, he took asylum in um, the... I, mean, I don't know if he took asylum or he went to the Turkish embassy and he was hiding out there. And then the Saudis just went in and oh, assassinated him. Just yeah, I don't think it's a good idea. Get away with it as well. What's that? They're just, they're yeah, just a massive mafia. Yeah. And then obviously Elon's tweeting this, so it's like 
there's a lot more like to the story than just to them asking about freedom of speech in the kingdom. Yeah. She goes a lot deeper, doesn't it? Yeah. That's like a proper beef. I don't want to know about the Will Smith Chris Rock beef. I want to know about this sort of yeah. GI James like Billy nothing compared to this. <laughs> Billionaire <laughs> beef, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Well, yeah, in terms of top five, um, this is what I found. So it's mostly sort of guys. companies. There's Elon the second, obviously, when he's just been investing like for a few weeks. MS, Sony, BlackRock. So it's mostly just asset managers, and then Elon and banks. That BlackRock Probably, are a mental company, aren't they? Yeah, they own pretty much big, big, big asset the manager. World. Yeah. But yeah, that, that freedom oh. must go a lot deeper. Well, yeah, I'll just explain the backstory a bit. A bit okay. of it. I don't, we don't know everything that goes on in Saudi Arabia as well. Like, that's just one thing I remember. When, when I, I think I heard this about this on Lou later. When I heard about it, Lou wasn't talking about what happened in Turkey. I'm not sure if he knew or not. But well, it's one of them. That's the thing I thought of. Do we want mm. to talk, be talking about that? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> It's a, it's a scary thing to talk about on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It but is, isn't it? It's in, it's in the BBC, like, it's all there. Mm. It's not like a... It's not like we're investigating it. <laughs> yeah, it's not like a hit, something that's been hidden. Like the way it's in the Western media, but nothing happened to Saudi and... Yeah, yeah we're not journalists. Yeah, we are. So don't come for us. <laughs> we just, uh, we're just commentators. No, but, but Elon's making big moves, though. What's he going to do after he acquires Twitter? What do you think his first thing's going to be? Well, he's going to take the world after that. <laughs> <laughs> do you think he's going to unblock Alex Jones and Donald Trump? <laughs> yeah, I reckon he will. Oh, I think God, he will. Who else is blocked that needs to be unblocked or wants to be? Uh, not sure. I think he will unblock uh, Donald Trump. Uh, I just, for some reason, I just want to hope he does. <laughs> yeah, I think he'll, he's good. he doesn't want people to be blocked. So, yeah, so I guess he'll unblock everyone and let it free them yeah. to speech. If people uh, sort of misbehave on it, I think he just wants to ban them for a certain period of time rather than block them for life. Mm. Do you think there, yeah. there's, there should be any reason to block someone at all? for harassment or anything like that yeah like with freedom of speech i think is a is a fine line between too much and yeah it's like a little. spectrum it's like a spectrum isn't it there's is like it... a stage where it gets extreme mm. yeah well, if it's like someone's like spilling out uh sort of extremist comments and trying to get people on board with their extremist ideologies, then I think it can be dangerous. But it's a public platform, so people are going to be arguing with them. So you're going to see a debate on there, which if somebody's thinking about becoming, or if someone gets come interested in this extremist view and you look at the comments, you're going to see people who have the opposite view. And then you're going to be a bit more balanced of whether to go in it. Mm. It's better than going on a platform where everyone's got extremist views and then you just get sucked in because you're not seeing anybody else's views. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is the way it's going at the moment. Yeah. Well, so The way my, well, most medias run. Yeah, exactly. It's like, in America, it's like, you have a CNN viewer or a Fox, Fox News viewer. Mm. Like, and both parties don't get on with each other. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure in the UK if there's any, no one's really, uh, it's not maybe, that divided in that way, is it? Not as much, I wouldn't say, as America. I don't actually know because I don't, I keep away from sort of that side of the news. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like the UK public are less sort of like political compared to other countries. I don't know why. Is it because like we're a bit more laid back with our culture? Or like more accepting yeah. of what's happening. I think we I guess, are more, more laid back here than in America. Obviously not now with what Boris did with the like apologies and stuff. Did you did you watch PMQs today? 
No, I sent a news article and didn't read it just in case it came up in this combo. Okay. <laughs> As I saw a news article as well, I didn't, I didn't read it there. I thought someone was going to pull it up if you want and we'll have a look. Okay. Have you read it, Jack? I've not read it, no, but I watched PMQ, so I think I know what it's going to be about. He apologised again. Basically, yeah. You've been apologising all year. Everyone forgot. Yeah, I know. Everyone was cracking on. But then they got fined, didn't they? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> How much they got fined? It wasn't even that much, was it? I think it was like 50 quid. Was it 50 quid? Oh, yeah. Ratford was more than that. I think it was like a piss take. Like, yeah. No, 50 quid or 100 quid. Was it 50 quid, Jack? I don't know how much it was. It wasn't much, though, like, compared to the fines. Thinking, that is a proper piss take. But they find other people a thousand pounds. Have they been, are they giving that money back? I don't know. Probably not. But then the thing is, is, like, people had parties and stuff, um, and they got caught, and they got fined, like, 10, 20K, didn't they, or something? Was it that high? Like, depending on the amount of people, I think people in London and stuff would have, like, big parties. Um, it was quite big. Fine. Multiple offenders got... I heard some people getting fined like 10k. Like commercial establishments were, weren't they? Yeah, I think so. Gyms. There was that guy. Well, uh, what's his name? Reps. Yeah, his gym didn't want to. He didn't want to close his gym down. He yeah. Got shit loads of fines. Everyone should get the money back though. Yeah. yeah. Well, wait. They can't. They pissed it all on Fela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with extremist comments too. Like we were talking about before. Have you guys heard about what's happening in Sweden about? Um, What's happened? Oh, yeah. Not. Yeah. Is it a bit controversial? Yeah, um, pull that shit up, man. I think a right wing journalist burnt the Quran. On a, oh, really? Oh, oh he, said he'll, he said he'll burn the Quran. And then. Did he um, just say he'll burn it? I'm not sure. I just I read Bert. I thought he'd actually burn it. A journalist. He said he... What's that? A journalist. I think it was a right wing journalist that did it. Yeah, so today the Swedish police had to shoot into the crowd or something. I saw a video on Reddit. Oh, yeah, this is the one that I just found. Put the video on from Reddit. Yep, I'm showing the right screen. Yep. But all this because he was burning in the Quran? Yeah, they're all so writing. It's because the Muslims are writing. Retaliation. Because of the, of retaliation, yeah. So they had to fire your shots, basically. He's chucking stones at the police from right next to him, or is he chucking them yeah. over? Right next to him. Right, right next to him. All right. Oh yeah, he's got a gun look, there. Look all of, like look all of them. Look how many there are. Did he shoot it into him? I think so. Yeah. This is crazy. But yeah, um, that's a video. This is very crazy. Um, you don't really and then, hear about stories like this from them countries like Sweden. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, like you, you'd assume like Denmark and Sweden are quite low, sort of politically divided countries, but I guess things like this happen. I know. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but, second uh, comment. Yeah, basically, a dude said Muslims are violent and threatened to burn the Quran. So in protest, Muslims became violent and proved his point. <laughs> yeah. And I think some comments were saying, like, I feel like making a comment is bad, but retaliating with violence and, like, actually hurting people's like, more, more yeah. like, it's worse. It sort of takes it away from what the comment was. Yeah, this one here. This is the exact comment that I was talking about. It's highlighted. Yeah, I'm just highlighting it more to make it double highlighted. Honestly, the person, uh, take enough highlight for a sec. It's Honestly. a bit hard to read. Or even if he burns some book, is not the one. Read out a bit louder, Cam, for the uh, audio listeners. Uh, zoom in a little bit into it. Okay. I can't zoom on my screen. Honest. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> too much. <Yeah. laughs> Honestly, the person who talks, or even if he burns some book, is not the one who is dangerous. That deserves nothing more than a yawn and a shrug. It's the people who start writing who are the dangerous and really crazy ones. It's their idiocy and violent behaviour that makes absolutely harmless behaviour still harmless. Talking about some religion should absolutely be fine. I should say be fine. Or, <laughs> yeah. what, or what did we gain our Western values for over centuries? That guy may be right wing, but let's lay the blame for what's happening where it belongs. As one OP says, presumably to cause chaos. 
and be able to say, look how violent and dangerous the Muslims are, support my party to get rid of them. He definitely seems to be succeeding. Mm. Mm. This is where, uh, like, the way that everyone's reacting to it, it's going to send people more in favour of what that guy said. Yeah. Which... It's uh, controversial, that, Jack. <laughs> very, very, very controversial, I know. I just I just saw the video, and it's under That's Insane. I watched quite a lot of That's Insane, but it's actually insane because... <laughs> Like with, with with the Swedish and Danish countries, like I always thought that w- there wasn't much violence with sort of disagreements, but I see that and I was like, yeah, they're perceived blown. as very peaceful. Um, yeah, but obviously, well, I'm culture. not sure like what the culture is like there because, or in like the that, like is Sweden part of, like the Nordic region? Is that the Sweden's Nordic? I think isn't it Nordic yeah. countries? Yeah, yeah, Sweden, Finland. Is Denmark as well? Because I think. A few years ago, <clears throat> uh, Denmark were in like the press about those uh, cartoons that they drew, and one of them showed like a picture of Muhammad or something. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, but they weren't allowed to. Well, yeah, well, no Muslims say you're not allowed to showing having pictures of Muhammad's like pro- prohibited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they all like they, they kicked off at the time showing it in the school, the teacher, right, to the children in the school. Yeah, I think it was something like that. Mm. So I'm not sure what, what the culture is is like uh, for uh, for Islam, but but yeah, extremist extremism, um, yeah, it's quite brutal. Mm. Definitely. All right. That was that. that was crazy. That was like that video you showed us just then was mental. I know, I know. The shit that guy throwing rocks right next to him. Wait, sorry. When did that happen? Today or oh, like yeah. a day ago? So we just have to I see how it plays out then. Mm. Hope it doesn't get any worse. I hope like they kind of settle it out soon. But yeah, there's that. Okay, next article. All right, so this is one of mine now. I think we were supposed to talk about this last week, but it kind of went over. So I just saved it for this week because it's still quite interesting. So we talked about EVs quite a lot today and so sort of this article sort of talks about one side that's quite expensive for EVs. So EVs are very expensive to make. So one side is a semiconductor shortage, which is quite a rare thing to make. And that's why it's so expensive in that sense. But also the other sense is the raw materials used to make the batteries. Um, it takes a lot of engineering to make them. And at the moment, the raw material prices are really high. I don't know if it's just in China or in other places, but I think it's lithium... Lithium and nickel, which are the main components of um, EV batteries, they've actually gone up quite a lot. So that's why EV prices are soaring in China. But I feel that's going to have a knock-on effect to sort of the rest of the world. So in a world now where with the Russia sanctions too, I think raw materials are just going to keep on going up. So don't know how long EV prices will take to stagnate, but I think they're going to be well, on the rise for a long time now. Yeah, well, I think EV prices have already been going insane even here. Um have a look for a, a company called Nikola. Have you heard of them? No. EV company. Um, just type in Nikola increases price of cars. So I think it was Nikola. They uh, so people had the car on pre-order, and they thought they were paying. I can't remember the actual figures, but I'd say forty grand. They thought they were paying forty grand for it, and then Nikola put the price up, and then emailed everyone saying, "Oh, if you got a car on pre-order, it's gone up to sixty grand oh, now." And shit. Everyone <laughs> Everyone kicked off with him and then he ended up reverting back and yeah. saying, um, oh, he might have been Rivian, actually. Is that a Nickel or a Rival- Rivian? I've heard of Rivian. Rivian do the trucks, right? Rivian? I can't, I can't remember what company it was. Well, maybe it was big price. Oh, yeah, I think it is, actually. Have you got it? Rivian? I think so. I think Rivian That's got a large uh, investment, didn't they, this last year? Was it Rivian? I don't know. Yeah, this one. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> oh. Yeah, so they increased the $12,000 price increase um, on its car for pre orders. Yeah, and then there was a massive backlash and they had to revert on it. That's crazy. 
Imagine. 12,000. Depending on this as well as new ones. Imagine you buy it and then you get an email yeah. <laughs> saying that you have to pay 12, 12k more. But these guys are primarily or well, only US based, right? I think so. I'm not sure. So that problem, which on the article Jack just pulled up, is having an effect on every... these. The the article you brought up, Jack, they produce them materials in China, right? Um, the one that I was talking about with the EV prices. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's where the engineer room. They yeah. sell them out to everyone else, and everyone else is having the problem. Then. Potentially, yeah. But then, yeah. if they're using it for their own production, then they're gonna have high prices too, right? But then Tesla, um, well, Elon wants to have, um, a, well, obviously make his own battery, which is American made. So we stop, so they stop using China. Importing, yeah, raw materials <laughs> from China. The thing is, because raw materials are going up, it's still going to be expensive anywhere around the world. Yeah. Um, Regardless of whether they're exporting, yeah. But this sort of brings me onto something else that I read uh, today, actually. I should have put that in my, my articles, actually. Uh, there was a study done by Volvo, and they compared. So their EV model of car is pretty much the exact same as their actual combustion engine one. Mm. But it's just got EV motor and one's got a combustion engine. Yeah. And it was comparing the difference, how many miles it would take. Because obviously an EV car has a, before it's made, or when it's made, there's already a massive carbon footprint on it. Mm-hmm. Whereas a combustion engine, the, the footprint's not as big because it yeah. doesn't take as many like precious metals and yeah, 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 yeah. So um, makes sense. it was comparing how many miles it would take before it sort of reaches some equilibrium. And I think it said ninety thousand miles it takes before the carbon footprint equals equilibrium. Well, that's not even far off a life expectancy of silver car. Oh, yeah, nowadays. Mm. Which is pretty crazy, isn't it? Mm. But that's based on... um, I think it was based on how cars are charged in America, where they use more sort of less greener methods of getting electricity. Whereas in Europe, we're a lot greener. So I think it said for Europe... It would be fifty-two thousand miles. Right, right, right. And then, so what's the equivalent? And does it have China in there? Because then it will be um, about six hundred thousand miles. I'm not sure. I don't think it did have China in. Oh. Hmm. But it is a uh, pretty crazy when you think about it. Like you think you're buying this car that's good for the environment, but is it that good for the environment? Yeah, because yeah, indirectly, all the pollution caused by even the transport, because transport still pollutes quite a lot. And if mm. if it's China exporting to the US at the moment, that's a quite a long journey in a way, basically like going across like the world. I guess it's like a start though, right? So they start with the cars and then the lorries that transport them on the US roads can then become electric. Then maybe the ships could... Yeah, this day. is what the article was saying, basically, the, like... Um... It's still, it's EV still in its infancy stage. Yeah. And as the technology gets better, as batteries get smaller and more efficient, then it's going to use less resources, but last for longer. So then the mileage will just keep decreasing and decreasing. Yeah. The process is more streamlined, won't they? Yeah. Whereas combustion engines are pretty much, I wouldn't add on if they're at the pinnacle, but they've improved miles better than they once were. Yeah, like, but how much like the, the like, uh, resource does it cost to build and transport combustion engines? Uh, he was saying that it's not as much as EV. Oh right. Yeah, I have heard about the EV just because of the the resources that it needs are just yeah. Ridiculous. And these batteries are heavy, and to get longer distance out of the car, they're increasing the battery size instead of looking at making it more aerodynamic or more efficient in other ways. Yeah. Using more materials then. Yeah. So the heavier it is, the more like 
load it's going to take when you travel when it's traveling places yeah, yeah yeah precious metals it's using in the batteries and then but once obviously once battery technology improves then evs are going to become more sustainable yeah definitely see how it goes but it is interesting that because it's just mm. everything sort of up in the air at the moment with uh environmental cop 26 yeah <laughs> Cop twenty six. No one wore masks there either. So <laughs> sticking to lockdown rules. But yeah, um, <laughs> guess next article. Yeah, should we make this one our last one? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, let's make it a fun one, Jack. There's only two more, so we can either do an F one one or the GPU one. So I'll let you guys pick this F one because we ended on the F one last time. It's fun. All right, let's do F one. All right. So it's similar this weekend for anyone watching F1 um, versus Italy racetrack. There's that and Monza. So for our real favorites here, but for the Tech Tuesday. So this article I found was, um, I think it was Sam that did the analysis, but he's saying that Red Bull are actually faster on the straights. So on a long straight and braking zone, Red Bull are faster. So that shows they have the straight line speed in the engine, but then there's a the reliability issues that they've got like a glass cannon engine. But Ferrari have been very reliable. They've been good all. They've had a good all-around car. So I'm just curious to see what you guys think. If Red Bull do stay reliable, then who do you think's got the edge? Uh, I don't know. I've not read any analysis or anything on it. Um, all right, should we go? Should we go a bit more into the article? Yeah, go on. You can explain to us, Jordan, what what they're saying. Yeah. So Red Bull won in Jeddah. So they got pole. So I think Perez got pole and then Max won. And when he was racing for Vichal in the last five laps. And because it had so many straights, the Red Bull were a lot faster on the straights. So I think that's where they had the edge in Jeddah. And I think with Imola, they had a track layout somewhere. So this is a track layout for Imola. Oh, yeah. It has one DRS zone with a long straight. But I feel like even the subsex of straights, they're still like quite straight with not much turning. So that's why I feel if Red Bull keep their reliability up, which... It's not been that great in previous races, so it'll be hard. Um, they will be faster on the straights, but then it just means that Ferrari will have to make more time in the corners, which they've been really good at in past races. So it's just yeah. to see where the equilibrium will be with that and which team can optimise the most time where they're most efficient, in a way. Well, in theory, then Red Bull should have this, if, as long as they stay reliable, right? So do they know what's causing the reliability problems at Red Bull? So the first time it was a fuel pump issue in Bahrain. Um, I've not read much into what caused it in um, in the last race weekend in Australia. But I imagine it might be a fuel pump issue again. Um, but then if it is a fuel pump issue, they said it's e easily fixable. But then if it's easily fixable, then why does it keep on happening? Mm. Because if Max can get a good advantage and then not push the car too hard, then he might be able to uh, keep the car reliable and still win. But he might not win by a massive margin, but if he can just manage manage the car, then, yeah, could see yeah. Red Bull winning. Should be good. But then, um, but Max is very far behind, so he has to think about the long game. I think uh, Leclerc's very far in front of the championship. He's had, he's been racing really well. Hmm. All right. All right. We'll find out on Sunday. Yeah. If you're watching the race, then uh, we'll see how it goes. What time does it kick off? Yeah, I'm not sure. I should know that, really. <laughs> it's this week, right? I think it must be. In, I know it's, this, it's the first sprint weekend, too, actually. So the format will be a bit different. So maybe the timings will be a bit different. Yeah, it is this weekend. Yeah. Sprint weekend, too. Sorry about that. I didn't really like the sprint weekends last, last year, but we'll see if they've made any changes to this year. All right. Should we wrap this up? Yeah. I think that does us. Nice it's great talking to you both. We'll catch up next week. Pleasure. Cheers, Thank guys. you for watching, Noel. See you later. Yeah. Take care.